What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the market tonight. Now, of course, that's just a working title. You know, we'll, we'll figure out exactly what we want to call it in a little bit here. But what I do want to have in these videos, guys, is some sort of, I guess, staple for capturing an overall market updates. You guys kind of get all the information you require. There may be several videos that come out throughout the day. It might be a video that comes out at noon, a video that comes out at 2 or 4 p.m. But mainly, I want to have one solid video that comes out Monday through Thursday that really gives everybody an idea. Maybe Friday. We'll, we'll discuss about that Friday. I'll let you let me know in the comment section below if you guys also would like a you know culmination video on Friday or if it's better off served on Sunday because I do feel like on Friday afternoon people want to kind of be outside and kind of relaxing kind of you know take off the, the end the end of the day there to kick off the weekend and then on Sunday you want to get prepared for the market and that's where I feel like you know it would probably serve best to have more of these uh, longer form kind of videos here so anyways guys I'm going to break down this video uh, with several different news stories several different setups some personal trades that I took today some personal trades that I'll be looking to take tomorrow or throughout that you know back half this week and uh, let's just kick this thing off and see how it goes all right so if you guys are new here of course subscribe to the channel if you've been here for a long period of time you guys know how we do smash that like button engage with the video let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i will be scrolling through to get some feedback so we can kind of consistently i guess improve this thing but here we go guys today did kick off with a little bit of a bang and by a bang i don't mean a good thing it is not wednesday it's not hump day i mean a bang by saying the new york stock exchange report there were some technical issues there now something very interesting happened okay berkshire Hath hathaway was down 99 percent and that stock's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and go to Unusual Wills here and just skip back to my profile. I tweeted out and asked, did anybody catch this dip? And somebody tweeted out that they did. First things first, there was a, a picture here that somebody actually caught on. And I, in the midday video, I said, hey, a few of those orders did fill. Somebody caught on and is up. 188 million don't know if that's real or not i actually do not know and then there was another one that came in here recently and said i don't know if this is real his name is uh lord birch one on on x so you can go through it check him out he said that he actually got as well his daily pnl is up 126 million just to be clear here the average trading uh price of the stock today was over 600,000 per share berkshire hashway is not something that you typically trade but at one point in time, with the technical issues that the New York Stock Exchange was having, it was down 99.9%. .9%, so it was under 200 bucks. So, guys, for those of you guys who are in the market, sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time, and your life will change like that. That doesn't happen all the time. But when it does, oh, my gosh, what a day. Now, the second most interesting story that I did find today that I do feel like a lot of people will be speaking about over the next few years here is that E-Trade is considering kicking Keith Gill off his platform. This is what the Wall Street Journal reports. This to me, I, I found this out when I was on the live stream in the afternoon and I don't even know how to react to it. I'm still actually going through the process. I'm trying to figure out who would have the bigger lawsuit <laughs> that Keith Gill or would it potentially be E-Trade? Listen to this, okay? E-Trade is considering telling meme stock influencer Keith Gill he can no longer use its platform after growing concerns about the potential stock manipulation amid its recent purchase of GameStop, the Wall Street Journal reported on Monday. Today is Monday. This is when it happened. Shortly before Keith Gill reignited a meme stock craze in May, pause there. For those of you guys who've been following the channel for the last two months here, I said repeatedly that GameStop, technically speaking, the chart itself, from a daily volume profile perspective, from a price action perspective, whether you're a pattern trader, whether you're an RSI trader, whether you're an EMA trader, whether you're a volume trader, several different aspects all move with confluence said this chart looks like it is ready to go. Now, it's interesting to me that from a technical perspective, a highly shorted name like GameStop, highly shorted compared to the rest of the market, not you know other highly shorted names per se, that looks technically sound could set up such a bullish move here that they will then shift 100% of the blame for a stock that looked already like it was ready to go on an influencer or specifically the guy who kicked off this whole meme stock era in the first place. Now, I do understand that he does have a lot of influence. I do understand that he does kick off a lot of interest, especially when he's on making an appearance on social media. Like, I understand that there is a lot of pull in anything that he does or any appearances he makes or any tweets he may tweet slash X he may X. I don't know how to say that. Anyways. I understand how that works, but if you were to compare several of the institutional updates that go out there, whether it's a price change update, whether it's a short report, like there are so many, whether it's Jim Cramer saying, bye, 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 sell, 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 like 
there are so many other examples of things that happen so much more often. I find it very interesting that this is where E-Trade wants to draw their line. And I digress. I'm a little bit biased here, but let's get back to it, okay? E-Trade parent Morgan Stanley declined to comment on the report. Smart move. From a legal perspective, smart move. GameStop shares jumped around 3% on Monday after the stock after the stock's influencer, known as Roaring Kitty, returned to Reddit with a post showing a $116 million bet on the embattled video game retailer. Now, showing his position, transparent, honest, if accurate, is what they're pointing out as potentially a problem or influence. From an, institute, from an institutional perspective, how many times have we seen institutions say we are buying this or we are investing in this or we are going short this? That happens so often. It's odd that this is where they're drawing the line. The post was first seen three years from his Reddit account by Gil, the influencer behind the 2021 retail trading frenzy. In 2021, screenshots on Reddit of his bullish GameStop trades triggered a rush of demand for meme stocks, often companies with weak fundamentals that, that gained a cult-like following through social media hype among retail traders. So this is kind of categorizing in a very simple, simple way that you know all of this is basically Keith Gill's fault. There's no way that this is the fault of anybody he was currently short these names. There's no way this is the fault of, of institutional investors who simply do not exit shorts with the right amount of time. Or it's not really high on the fact that people who choose to jump into a trade or choose to you know risk their own hard-earned money are simply knowledgeable people that are making their own decisions. It's really kicking the blame on absolutely one person, which is insane to me. But that is definitely going to be something that we're going to have to follow here. And we will definitely give you guys updates over the next little while here. Okay. Now, I won't go to the SPY, the Q, and Bitcoin, but then I'm going to go to Unusual Whales, who did come up with a link linking to a folder specifically tracking Keith Gill's portfolio. But stay tuned for that, all right, guys? If you guys haven't already, of course, smash the like button, engage the video, and I appreciate you guys for tuning into this longer form market update. Okay, so guys, the SPY right now, currently looking very interesting. I mean, when we saw ourselves, these are two back to back days here with long wicked hammer light candles from the spy one coming back down to roughly 518 on friday of last week two coming back down to roughly 5 522 and you can see here these are pretty bullish looking closes here on the last two days with the spy close the s p 500 in my personal opinion here looks almost like it broke out it came back down to retest support and it is ready to go again in my personal opinion here I think the market is due for some correction, some pullback for those of you guys who've been following here for the last few weeks. You guys know that I was expecting a pullback down towards 524. If we were unable to reclaim 524, then I'd be looking for a move back down towards 512. But we reclaimed 524 on Friday. We came back down to use it as support today. In my personal opinion here, unless we see some sort of significant drawdown, I wouldn't be shot for another retest here of the all-time highs for the S&P 500, right? The same can be said for the Qs here. We came back down to almost test both levels of support on Friday, 449 and also 442, followed by closing above it, beautiful hammer candle there, high volume, almost indication of reversal. We opened up the market today on the gap up, came back down, retested support again, and then got bought right back up again, almost finishing over the 9 EMA on the daily. The Qs also look like it broke out, it came back down to retest, and now we could be looking for higher highs. Now, I do think until we see higher highs in the market, this is still a very high likelihood shot that we're seeing lower highs. And I'll give you guys an example here for what that means. Lower highs, meaning the trend will be down, right? That just means we're, we're not seeing higher highs. We'd be seeing lower highs and the trend would still be down if that's what it's looking like. So until we actually do see a break back above these all-time highs, it's it's a little bit questionable. This this price range in this area here is going to be a little bit questionable, so let's be very careful. Let's make sure we understand that the trend is not really set until we do get some sort of test here of the all-time highs and break through it, okay? Going on to Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin to me, I don't know why that said Bitcoin and then it didn't go to Bitcoin. That's interesting. Bitcoin to me had an opportunity to really break out of this flag here today, but it got rejected from that $70,000 level here. We got a daily high of roughly 70,268. Bitcoin has been this flag for roughly, let's just take a look here, 96 days. And there's no days off for Bitcoin. There's no markets off. There's no holidays. Bitcoin is 24 seven all the time. So almost a hundred days of consulting in this wonderful flag pattern here. It's got five different attempts to break out of the top of this flag. If and when this does happen, because it is if there is a possibility that this thing could fail right back down below this neckline area and come back down towards the bottom of the flag before ultimately moving back up to retest the top again. It's very possible. 
I don't think that's likely, but it is possible. Okay. So if we do get a break back above this $70,000 level, there's two things that I'll be looking at. One is a retest of 73. And then two is a, a significantly high volume push that may happen overnight, may happen with some sort of SEC ruling, may happen with some sort of Ethereum update, ETF update. I'm not sure. A push up towards 80,000. If and when that happens, several of the Bitcoin mining stocks, in my personal opinion, will be back on watch again. Now, Moving back to GME, guys, here is what I want to go over with you guys. One, GameStop did have an absolutely amazing rip today. The contracts that I did have for June, I did exit the vast majority of them, and I only got back into a few small contracts. For those of you guys who are in the Discord, you guys know I posted my entry strike and price for those contracts. I currently am holding them right now. Did not sell after a little bit of a sell off there near close, and I will be holding on some at least until tomorrow morning to see where it opens. But the June calls that I had from 25 to 30 bucks, I did close today roughly at around 1200 to 13,500 per contract in profit, which was an absolutely amazing day. Today was probably one of the best days that I've had so far this year at the open, right? So solid starts the day for me. That being said, I do think that the, the vast majority of risk that I want to have in this move has come and gone. OK, at this point in time, what I simply want to do is give myself some sort of exposure towards the upside, make sure that I can enjoy the ride here. But I do know that as we start to see things like E-Trade and these like those kind of conversations happening around a trade, around a stock that can be so volatile. It makes it seem like there are things happening behind the scenes that we have absolutely no control on. There always are. But when, it, when they're that apparent, when they're that visual, it just makes you want to be safe. It makes you want to be cautious. It makes you want to be very responsible and manage your account accordingly. And I would suggest that anybody out there who's touching any stock in the market, manage that accordingly, okay? Understand what a high volatile name is. Understand what a high risk, high reward trade is. Understand how to associate the risk with the size of the trade appropriately. Or for those of you guys who want a little bit, you know, risk averse, you can just simply give yourself some exposure with shares. That's not just for this name exactly, for any name in the market. All right. Now, getting back to GameStop. Closing above that 2767 level here that I was expecting to us to go up and hit is exactly what I wanted because that is a key level of support here. The next thing for me is do we have a daily candle close above 35 or below 2767? If we do have a daily candle close below 2767, I'll be looking for this gap to fill at 2365 and then this gap back down here, roughly around 1968, to also fill. If we have a daily candle close above 35 bucks, your guess is as good as mine, but I would guess that this thing is going to go absolutely bananas as it heads towards earnings. The earnings got moved, so now it's going to be all the way back on Tuesday, June 11th. But in my personal opinion, this is going to remain a very hot name in the market, at least, at least until then. Now, there could be times where they go up. There could be times where it's consolidating. There could be times where it cools down. But I think it's going to be a very, very volatile name until we do see some sort of update coming from the company, and that should be Tuesday, I believe, in the afternoon on June 11th, okay? So what I'm looking for right now, GameStop is currently up 5% of the after hours, is simply to see what happens tomorrow morning, and can we get a daily candle close above that 35.99 level? Now, GameStop here, uh, I'll show you guys exactly what I was looking at near the end of close today, guys. You can see here that once the market opened, it looked like calls actually came in like crazy. The overall price action, so the green line is a net uh, bullish premium, the red line is a net bearish premium, and the yellow line is actual price action, right? The price action came down. It had one halt today. It halted down almost at open. It sold off. Calls kind of came in and stayed hot basically all day. Puts came in very near the end of the day, almost as if people may have been aware of the fact that each trade was going to come up with some sort of story here i'm just i'm connecting the two there's no connection there whatsoever i'm just throwing that out there for people to think of but i don't know anything okay now the price action did come down near the end of the day here it's currently up around five percent in the after hours i want to see how tomorrow looks um from what i can track with the flow with the usual whale because i do have access to their site um it seems as if uh, uh rowan kitty still has his positions open so it seems as if he's still holding his position apparently let's go back here then you go back to unusual whales. Apparently, his position looks significantly more expensive today than it did yesterday. So let's take a look at this. Yesterday, he was down in the options and up in the shares. Today, 
he apparently has a daily gain of 78 million 600,000 total gain is up 78 sorry 85 million 463,161.55 cents total game up 48.97 percent his total value in the account at this time is 289 million 276,456 cents don't forget the 56 cents every cent counts but that is exactly what we are talking about right now in regards to the potential for E-Trade to kick a client who may be the best trader that they have. Now, of course, this is an opinion, right? Some other opinions may say they might be the most manipulative trader in the market. Some people say he might be the most influencer trader in the market. Some people say he might be the most crooked trader in the market. Not my words, not my description, but it's what you get from the storylines like the one that E-Trade sending out here, right? So that being said, guys, huge update here. It's very possible that we can look back at this in 15, 20 years and say, what a freaking trade. Apparently, if these are still positions that he's holding right now, like, can you imagine being up 78.6 million in a day and think to yourself, nah, not yet. Mm -mm. Not yet. What do you have to think is coming? For you to be up 78.6 million in a day, or sorry, my apologies. No, no, I'm right. 78.6 million in a day and think to yourself, more. I want more. That is insane to me. That is crazy. But it's what got him here, right? So, to East Rome. Now, here's the usual whales. Um, posting several different portfolios from several different people that are public figures that are making public trades, okay? Now, that being said, if you take a look at this, you can see I scroll down here, that Roaring Kitty, whoa, no, that's not it. Where is Roaring Kitty? Roaring Kitty was around here somewhere. Ken Griffin is there. Where is it? Where are you, Roaring Kitty? Uh, pro Congress ETF, short Congress ETF. Did Rowan Kitty's account go somewhere? Michael Burry's account is there. Pro Kramer, David Portnoy, Inverse Barstool, Stephen Lynch. Oh, here it is, Roaring Kitty. Deep effing value. So I can't access it right now. The link is not working at this time, but his account is up 47% here, and the usual whales is going to be tracking exactly what he does in the account and post them here. So you guys can come back here to the channel once in a while, and I will do basically a weekly review on what is going on in his account, because if he's making $78 million in a day and holding on to that position, I want to know what he's going to do next. I am just interested. I don't have to follow those trades. I don't have to tail them, but I am interested in knowing what he does next, okay? On to the next one, guys. Mera right now. Every chart seems to be going back to GameStop. Trading view. Stop doing that to me. I don't know what you're trying to do here. Mera right now. This is one of the Bitcoin um, mining names I think will have one of those significant upside moves here. I'm still looking for this to move back up and regain over $21. In my personal opinion here, once Mera, if and when Mera does break back up at $21 level, this is going to be a freaking electric mover. Today, it had an amazing move today. I did take a loss today with Mera. That being said, I am not afraid to go back and take another shot later on this week when the time is right. But as long as this remains over that 1841 level, guys, I am looking to go long here and target some very, very, very aggressive price targets. But of course, we'll manage accordingly and keep that going. Last but not least, guys, we are also looking at, of course, games not possible from this chart again. NVIDIA was the one that we we're looking at here. NVIDIA seems to be one of the most bullish names in the market consistently, despite the fact that everybody's waiting for this thing to fall. But the split for NVIDIA is coming up here, guys. It should be basically, from what I heard from, what I heard from the report, whatever you have on the 6th, should be appropriately reflected in your account on the 7th, if not, not the 8th and the 9th on the weekend, but the 10th on the Monday. It should appropriately be in your account with a split. And the split, as you guys can see here, is listed as a 10 to 1 forward split. Okay, so you should have something on the lines of one tenth 
the value across 10 different shares for every one share you had in your account of NVIDIA. And this could be one of those opportunities where people look to start to invest if they do have a, you know, a smaller size portfolio or they just can't simply afford to be buying $1,100 per share. It makes sense, right? Several different names that have these splits also saw a significant amount of upside. Apple, Google, Tesla, Amazon, you name it. If you go to those names and look at when they announced that they were going to split to when they split, you typically do see a pretty positive trajectory up until that split point. All right, guys. So guys, that is all the information we got tonight. I do appreciate you guys tuning into this long form outlet. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys did, guys, smash the like button, engage the video. Of course, if you guys are interested in training with us live, guys, link in the description below to jump in with us with a free trial for the rest of this month. Feel free to jump in there before the spots are full. For everybody else, I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning on the live. Enjoy yourselves. Have yourself a great night. Deuces.